In this video, we've returned to electric classic cars. I say returned, things have changed rather a lot since uh, I last paid them a visit. So we're here to meet Richard, who some of you may recognize from the TV program, Vintage Voltage, and have a chat about what's changed and what's going on. So before we get started, obviously I I've known you since almost the start of electric classic cars. The back start, in, really. Yeah, 2016, the, very, the Red Beetle. Very first car yeah. that we converted. And that, that was kind of like almost man in a shed engineering. It, it was, was you, man in the you shed. And, you and one man building that car. But since then, it's grown to such a degree. It, how it's, how it's many a, conversions do you think you've done now? Well, it's a hobby that's got out of control, as my wife calls Very it. Very much, right? yeah. Um, I think we've done about 70 cars now. Wow. And we've become, uh, in that probably six years, uh, we've become the world's largest converter of classic cars to electric now. Wow. With some margin as well, by the yeah, way. Yeah. I, mean, I know everybody out there in the, in the marketplace from the States to Australia, and yeah, we're, we're by far the largest, but uh, I'm still having fun. Excellent. It still feels like, you know, I'm just, you know, dicking around with cars, you know, which is great. You know, Perfect. It doesn't seem like work. Yeah, seems well, could, could we have a look at what you've got going on? Go Let's go and have a, a nose. Ignore the diesel powered like forklift <gasps> truck. <laughs> So yeah, you probably recognize some cars in here. Some wow. rare cars, some mass market cars. Fiat 500s. Yeah. In the, fact, the Fiat 500's still a thing? Yeah, yeah, you've driven one of them in the yeah. previous video. Uh, we, we probably do the most popular cars of Fiat 500s, uh, Land Rovers, and Beetles. Ah, uh -huh. so, uh, is, so is that your own personal Land Rover? That one is, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so, so what's the spec on that one? Uh, that is the Fastest Land Rover in the world, 0 to 60 in 3.8 seconds. Crikey. Uh, it's got 600 horsepower Tesla drive unit in it now. And uh, it's scary, mm -hmm. <laughs> in short. So is that still on the Land Rover gearbox? No, no, we've uh, essentially replaced um, uh, the engine. Engine and the gearbox have come out. Mm -hmm. um, so the engine, gearbox, transfer box has all been removed. Wow. We've put a Tesla drive unit mid-mount. In fact, if you bend down here, you'll see it. So, I'll, I'll, I'll save you. I'll save you scrubbing on the floor. <laughs> so there you go. So that's oh, the wow. Tesla drive unit mid-mounted. Yeah. And then it goes off to the front prop, which is the same length mm -hmm. and front prop. And then the rear prop is extended a little bit. Um, and then in the engine bay, we've got um, uh, about 60 kilowatt hours of battery. So would that normally be transversely mounted on a Tesla to drive each yeah, wheel? Yeah, 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 exactly. So you've kind of rotated it around. So it normally sits at the rear, driving the rear axle. We've rotated it 90 degrees like that, changed the internal gear ratio, because obviously if you didn't change the gear ratio, it'd be maximum speed of 50 miles an hour, because it's still got to go through the uh, ratios of the front and rear diffs. Mm -hmm. So uh, we've changed the gear ratio in the actual Tesla drive unit itself, and as well as all that, we then reversed it because the way that the props um, um, rotate, you actually need the motor to be running in reverse. So it was almost very fast backwards. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> so we've done a lot of mods to it. It looks yeah. like it's quite an easy, like, just turn it to 90 degrees. No, not quite as simple as that. You've got wow. to reverse it. You've got to put a, a limited slip diff in it because it's an open diff. You've mm -hmm. got to do all sorts of mods to it. Gosh. So, and then now in the front, we've got a... 60 kilowatt hour battery pack so this essentially in the space of the old td5 engine or whatever was mm -hmm. in there um, we've now got 60 kilowatt hours uh, and another 40 kilowatt hours in the rear so it's a 100 kilowatt hour battery pack wow so uh yeah it's a uh, it's got ccs as well so if you open that flap down there that's it that's CCS, oh yeah so you got the charging the extra extension for the rapid charging yeah it says Three phase AC in there, so it's 22 kilowatt um, on the AC side and 150 kilowatts on the DC side for rapid charging. So, so apart from the lack of a proper roof, very practical. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, it's got a roof. What are you talking about? Oh, you've obviously been off-roading in it as well. Oh yeah, you use and abuse it a lot. Perfect. So uh, yeah, it's got a roof. What are, you, what, are you, what are you complaining about? There's a bit of tent on the top. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad we're not going out in this one today. We are going to be playing with one of the vehicles that has been built oh, by Electric Classic I'm going, to make, I'm going to make you drive yeah. this now. It was snowing this morning. Yeah, it'll be uh, exciting. So well, this is this is my toy. Mm -hmm. um, I just, uh, yeah, you enjoy that a lot in the in the summertime. One of the benefits of getting rid of the uh, gearbox, by the way, is um, oh wow, you have a flat floor. 
Yeah, because normally you've just got a huge transmission tunnel. Yeah. Uh, and also a, a gear stick, uh, a high low ratio box sink, uh, yeah. handbrake comes out here. Never very comfortable for the person in the middle seat. No. So now you don't need a high low ratio gearbox because you've got maximum torque from zero RPM with a, mm -hmm. a motor. So, so you can crawl. You can crawl like literally at a snail's pace over rocks. Really controllable as well. Mm. Um, and you've also got off-road mode, um, which uh, ups the regen on hill descents and stuff like that, um, which works really well if Brilliant. you switch it on, unlike a TV presenter in a, in a TV show, which I will <coughs> remain unnamed, that didn't switch the damn thing on when she was going downhill. But, um, yeah, it works really well. So uh, a really, really capable off-roader mm -hmm. so easy now it makes serious off-road in child's place so my kids drive it um in off-road mode not yeah. in normal mode yeah in off-road mode you can floor the throttle and it'll just gradually go up to a maximum speed of about 10 miles an hour i think it is. nice so really kitty friendly mode it's got three limited slip diffs in so you've got a limited slip diff in each axle and in the middle as well so, perfect which is why I like this thing. So mm. this uh, VW Synchro T3, yeah. four-wheel drive camper. And we're converting this to electric at the moment. Excellent. And uh, if this works as well as I think it'll work, I want one of these. So I might sell this to get one of these. It, it looks a lot warmer. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's got solar panels on the roof. It's yeah. got a double bed upstairs, another double bed downstairs. But it's a, it's a four-wheel drive, proper, you know, very capable off-roader, mm -hmm. as well as being a camper. Now, uh, so not everyone's comfortable with the idea of electrification of classic cars, but in some cases, it really does make them an awful lot better. We've got a Land Rover that actually goes quite quickly and quietly and has a lot more space. Another one in production here. So what's the spec of this one? Uh, fairly similar to the Defender. So okay. we kind of based it off the Defender tried and tested sort of like formula, if you like, mm -hmm. and shoehorned it into a, a smaller like um, a version of it. So the chassis rails are about around about the same sort of like uh, width, mm -hmm. but obviously there's not as much space in the front. So if you look no. at the fronts, you'll see on, on the Defender, if you compare where the windscreen uh, is there, the bonnet only comes to here. Oh, yeah. So we had to make a, a different, different sized battery box. So uh -huh. it's a smaller battery box. So in there, I can't remember what that is. I think it's, uh, it's about 50 kilowatt hour battery pack, mm -hmm. maybe 48 kilowatt hour battery pack in, in the front, but the rear is about the same. Uh, so, so is this now permanent four wheel drive? Permanent four wheel drive. Ah, so that's a, a, another change. Yep. You don't have the selectable. And we put power steering on it as well. I can't remember if the original had power steering, but now it's got power steering. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, very, capable off-roader and we did mm -hmm. fairly similar things inside as well as the charge point Oop. there you go so oh nice from the outside it all looks original yeah so this one hasn't got the rapid charging no no, no. Uh, and then in, inside very practical to like seats um uh, leather seats um wood slats on the floor so you yeah, can I really like those wash slats. it wash it out yeah. and wipe them out really and again easy. it highlights the space you've now got in the middle. Yeah, in fact, you can see the, orig the original tunnel used to come up to this this height, that height there. Yeah. I used to have the, the gear selector and the high-low ratio and all that gubbins there. And now we've lowered that down. So now in the middle, it's quite a practical, nice space. You can place actually sit there, yeah. And then the dial cluster's kind of like uh, been uh, modernized. It still looks kind of the same, um, but now it's got state of charge here and motor temperature and your speed over here but still it's fairly the same and then over here you've got your parking brake and your um, reverse and drive yeah so lovely real simple so while i can fully understand going electric with something like series 2 land driving, it can add some real benefits one but i'm still not entirely sure how i um, how comfortable i am with it it's it's this one over here <laughs> it's the gordon keeble uh, an absolutely beautiful Italian style British car with um, a Chevrolet small block V8, but yeah. not anymore. Not anymore. Now, uh, Mr. Gordon and Mr. Keeble wanted to kind of create um, uh, the kind of ultimate tour, if you like, back in the day. And, yeah. You know, they got the styling right with an Italian uh, designer, as you say. Got a big block Chevy, a small block Chevy up uh, front. 
and the, the formula was right. But I think if Mr. Gordon and Mr. Keeble were around today doing the same sort of thing, a bit like the DeLorean we did, if mm. you know, John DeLorean was still around, they would probably start off with electric mm. if they were going to do the whole thing again now. Because essentially, if you want to, I mean, we've kind of done the same thing because we put, put an overly powerful American engine in it, but it's just like a 21st century version from Tesla. Yeah. So it's still an American, like, you know, but monster. F for me, that, that car was so much about the noise, the soundtrack. So, a, bit, a bit like these. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, so what, what have you replaced that with? Where, where's the excitement now for you? Driving them and using them. Mm. So, I mean, you, you, you're kind of the same as me. You like to use and enjoy your classic cars uh, every day. Yeah, yeah. You're not going to put something like this Ferrari Testarossa in a, you know, in an oxygen tent as an investor, just like sitting there doing nothing with no, it. No, the, the enjoyment, enjoyment comes that, from doing this bit. You want to drive it. Yeah. And, but you don't, because essentially you don't know if the reliability is going to be okay. You don't know how it's maintained. A lot of people don't even know even what a Haynes manual is. Mm. You know, the new generation don't know what a Haynes manual is. Unless you can switch it off and on again, it starts to work, they're lost. Yeah. But now, that, that, that means that they're then alienated from using classic cars and engaging with classic cars and enjoying them as daily drivers. Mm. Well, converting them to electric means that now you can, because now there's no maintenance. No, They're no like, valve clearances. Nope. Oh, no carburetors to tune. You can just tune. turn it on and then enjoy it. And everything else, classic car wise, is there. It's still like you know, feels like a classic car. It's still sit in it, and it's like a mm. classic car. Uh, but the only thing that's not there is the noise. So it's it's a weird feeling to expect. It's a little bit like having um, uh, an old house, mm -hmm. and you live in it for one winter with the old coal fireplaces and the whole going out to the coal thing and filling the thing up with coal and you're starting the fire in the morning and stuff like that and then by the next winter you're going i don't want that again no i'm going to put a modern central heating system in <sighs> well do you lose the soul of the house and the whole like no no you actually enjoy the house more mm. it's still an old cottage from the 17th century but now you're enjoying it more and it's easier to live with on a day-to-day -day basis and that's very similar to the experience of uh, putting an electric motor in a classic hmm. car for me. So what is it that really first drew you to electric power? What is it that got you hooked? You just said it. Power. Right, right. <laughs> it mean, is just that seamless, endless yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you talk. know I used to rally the Porsche 914. Mm. Uh, when I stopped doing that uh, after seven years, I thought I'll build a new engine for my drag race and Beetle. And I'd already built a supercharged motor, stupidly, overly powerful thing. I thought, right, I'll build one now with a turbo and a supercharger. That'll be fun and I build my own race engines back in the day. And as I was scoping that out, thinking how complicated it's gonna be with different wastegates and you know, all this gubbins, and I, 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 my professional career is kind of in the energy industry, and I mm -hmm. just thought, hmm, what about electric motor? Because you know, one of the figures I was looking at was um, you know, the horsepower, and I remember thinking of, of a similar horsepower motor um, uh, on a wind turbine starter, if you like, and it was about that size. Mm. And it was just sealed, mo uh, sealed bearings at either end, no maintenance, you could buy it off the shelf, just make an adapter plate, stick it in, and all I've got to do then is figure out how to give it like, you know, uh, 180 volts. And I thought, right, I'll, I'll try that, because I've built loads of race engines, never mm. done one of these before. And then I did it, and then the first time I ever put my foot down, I'm like, what? yeah, whoa! <laughs> oh, right, yeah, that's it, petrol's dead for me then, that's where yeah. power is now. And that's what it was. It, for me, it was nothing to do with environmental reasons or anything like that. It was to do with, I want to go faster, more mm. reliably. Yeah. So. And I, I must concede, I'm here wearing my power less is more hoodie today. But yeah, it's just that instant talk. But the fact that it's so docile as well. Yep. Whereas your race tune Beetle would have been horrible to drive anywhere other than a drag strip. Yeah, exactly. Great, so, on, great in straight lines, yeah. but I live in Wales. <laughs> We've got lots of corners. <laughs> it's made so good in corners. But yeah, and you're stuck in traffic and it's... Burr, 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 yeah. Burr, yeah. And yeah. it's lumpy, the cam is uh, very lumpy and mm. yeah, we've got to keep it going. And, uh, yeah. So initially, it was that um, you know, epiphany moment for me of like, wow, that's a lot of power. Mm. But very soon after that, I realized, actually, now, this is so reliable and so easy to drive, I can drive it as a daily driver. Mm. So then my 1968 Beetle then became like, well, why do I need this, like, diesel power Volvo? I'm just going to use the Beetle. Yeah. So from that year onwards, I've been pure electric, because now I can use my classic cars as daily drivers. Mm. So reliability is there. 
the power is there to keep it up with modern traffic, and you know, like the the enjoyment is still there as well. It's not like you're driving around, you know, some you know soulless white goods product. No, no, still no you're driving something, but it's beautiful. Yeah. Still, you know, still everything is exactly the same. That Land Rover feels like you're driving the Land Rover, but now it hasn't got the go 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 and black smoke coming out the back. Mm. You know, so. That's that's the reason why I went electric, and I haven't looked back since. And all my classic cars are electric now. We're going to unveil something very special now. I'm frankly amazed. Right, well, uh, you can do it from the rear. If that's okay. Yep. Ooh. Where's the drum roll? You're going to put a drum roll over the top. We'll have to do that. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. It's a Maserati Ghibli. They built about 1,100 of these. Uh, 4.7 V8, I think originally. Yeah. Yeah. Right hand so, drive. Oh gosh. So that. Um, puts the rarity up even higher. Now, the rarity of this um, is uh, it's quite special because this was the very car that Maserati had on the stand in the London car show when they launched the car. Wow. So if you look at the original like launch of this car in the UK, this was the car they had on the stand. Wow. But it, um, unfortunately, over the years, the engine has gone. So there's, there's nothing in there. It looks um, a little empty, yeah. There was, oh, uh, look at the little twin fans, how cute. Yeah. Uh, so the guy was wanting to try to figure out what to do with it. Should he put a non-matching numbers engine, et cetera, back in? And he came across us and thought, right, well, if you can do a, a light a conversion, which basically means a totally reversible conversion, mm -hmm. Bolt then in. let's yeah. do it. Mm, so wow. that's what we're doing. And then he's going to be using this, um, like all of the customers that we build, they're able to then use it mm. regularly um, on the uh, on the road. So that's the plan with this. we are uh, just started that process there now. Uh, we've got the run it through the original gearbox because mm -hmm. he still wants to be able to have that feel. Um, but yeah, we've scoped it all out now and we've got the adapter plate just getting finished now to be able to mo uh, make the motor to the gearbox. Yeah, I mean, you, you mentioned the gear show. I noticed on the mini build that's in the current series of vintage voltage, that gorgeous little blue mini, yeah. with, what was it, 300 horsepower Tesla yeah, motor? Yeah, 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 yeah. But the owner had made that little gear shift himself, just yeah. so you still got forward and reverse, and you still got that snickety feel. Yeah. Like, exactly. Not everyone wants the twiddly knobs, do they? Yeah. Some people like a proper lever I mean, still. Th there's a number of ways you can go. You can have switches, like uh, on the Land Rover, I've got mm -hmm. a forward and a reverse. You can have the rotary switch, like forward, like neutral and reverse there. Or you can have, like we've done in the 911 and the Mini, essentially have a, a, a forward or reverse, or whichever way it is. Um, and then the Ferraris is the same. So okay. The Ferrari's got that classic, iconic gate shifter. Yeah. And there you can essentially keep the gate shifter, but have a forward and reverse. Oh, if you're really clever, you could put regen modes in different positions. We've done that as well. Oh, yeah. uh, um, But on some vehicles, we actually keep the gearboxes. So on the Fiat 500, if you remember driving yeah, that, you yeah. have the gearbox mm. and you can still change gear. You've got a clutch, you can put it in second, third, but because of the amount of torque that you've got with an electric motor, you end up just basically leaving it in third, starting it in third, and probably leave it there for most of the day. Yeah. Unless you get onto the motorway and then you can put it in fourth gear. But little Fiat 500s are quite scary in the motorway. So. Yes, yes, that's definitely true. Whatever the power plant, they're going to be scary. Yeah. So yeah, this is going to be a really special build for us. Looking forward to getting our teeth into this one. There's well, another one then there if you want to unveil that one. Have a look at that. You'll look, you love that. What's that? Ooh. Oh. oh, that's a Mercedes-Benz 190SL. 190SL. There's no prizes, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that is like the baby to the iconic 300SL. Yep. Uh, had a four-cylinder engine Correct. originally. Pretty, pretty gutless engines, yeah. to be fair. Uh, oh, that's going to be very exciting. Such an elegant, beautiful car. Oh, so pretty. Oh, yeah. Love it. And it's just come local, local ladders just on the restoration on it because this was a mm -hmm. basket case. And I mean basket case mm. i mean this should have been scrapped quite frankly but we've managed to salvage it and save it um lots of new panels on it it's a bit like triggers room this one yeah because uh, that's one of the things people can't it's not just a case of bringing a shiny car and saying make it electric you actually do quite a lot of restoration oh, yeah, yeah. here oh you should see the bit so this is kind of like uh, this isn't the start this is kind of like the the metal work done now but if you want to see a finished rest restored car look at that bmw over there oh let's go and take a look so this is a car I recognize from social media. I've seen this um, out and about online. Uh, how did this one come about? This one came in as a basket case, okay. in short. I mean, uh, it was um, 
I think stored in a London garage for about 20 or so years, if not mm -hmm. more. The sunroof was open oh. and water um, um, was dripping in right at the wrong point, went into the car, completely rotted out the interior. It was a, it was a mess. The, the, the paint had all bubble rusted. It was, it was horrible. Mm. We've done a full on restoration, about two years. It's taken us to get it to this point. It's finished now. Uh, but yeah, when it came in, this was in a sorry state, mm. and um, now it's a beautiful car. Not only that, but it goes like a rocket. Yeah. So, so this is this is a BMW 3 litre CSL. CSI. CSI. It's to look like a CSL race car. Okay. Yeah. So what gives it away is the sunroof. Ah. So yes. anybody that knows their BMW E9s would go, ah, that's not a real CSL because it's got a sunroof on it. Yeah, I suppose race cars, not that desirable yeah. sunroof. No. Uh, the CSLs used to have lighter body panels mm. and um, I think they had aluminium like uh, roofs uh, and bonnets and stuff like that as well. But now this is a CSI that's been converted, in a, well, it's a converted kind of uh, to be recreated with a shark nose like a BMW CSL look. Yeah. But it actually came with all these on it. So the, the chin, chin spoiler, um, these iconics like things here. The, um, spoilers up spoilers at the back at as the well. Back. Uh, all this yeah, was on it, it, but again, it was all in a bit of a sorry state. Yeah. So we had to re redo it all. I just love this. It, it just yeah. kind of like scoops Because th This was all a, a kit that came with the cars when they were new, so they could use all this stuff for touring car racing, Correct. wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Very uh, popular and very successful touring car back in the day. Mm. But the... Um, the woodwork in this, as you can imagine, with the water ingress, the, the interior was just a mess. Oh gosh. And all the woodwork inside, mm -hmm. um, all the dash and all these panels, this was um, uh, done in a place near you. Ah, oh, okay. Uh, what's it called? Whiteland Restoration? Yes, yeah, so, uh, OJ that's around here somewhere. Um, uh, he lives near there and um, basically did the veneer um, restoration. Wow. Uh, in their workshop. That's extraordinary. So, this is one of the cars you'll see um, in Vintage Voltage. Um, so, such an iconic car, beautiful. Yeah, so the usual mixture of Tesla motor and batteries? Yeah, so we've got, um, so you used to have a six cylinder inline motor up front mm -hmm. um, and um, uh, the different stuff at the back. And what we ended up doing was actually putting the Tesla drive unit in the rear uh -huh. where the diff used to sit. Yeah, so you completely ditch the conventional gearbox. Yeah, so we basically put a Tesla drive unit in the rear here, and then um, a big batch pack up front, and another small one at the back to balance the weight out. Mm -hmm. So you still have a decent oh, yeah. sized boot. still plenty of space. Um, there's, the battery pack is behind there. So there's a small battery pack behind there. Um, and in here, You've got some other bits and pieces as so a 12 volt battery and the DC converter down there. Mm -hmm. um, and what's in that compartment there? Oh, that's just the coolant. So that's your coolant reservoir in there. Um, and then buried down deep in there is the Tesla drive unit. So that's ah. about 450 horsepower and many, many times more power than this originally had. So Lime. now this goes like an absolute rocket. Mm -hmm. so I can well imagine. You're not driving this one today. No, no. <laughs> I'd be terrified of it, especially as it's wet. But yeah, 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 wow. Yeah. So do you want to see how the process works? Yeah, yeah, let's go through that. So um, when the cars come in, a bit like the uh, Ferraris here. Mm, yeah, just just a pair of Ferrari Testarossas, just casually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, you may as well have a look at the engine, you know, because uh, you know, it's not going to be in for that much longer. No. So when the cars come in, uh, we normally have to uh, just dry them, make sure that the steering brakes and everything else works, because what you don't want to do is convert a vehicle and then come to the end and goes, well, the brakes that rubbish before, or is that not? Yeah, yeah. So we normally dry them to just snag anything that needs to be noted before you um, drop the engine out. Corner weight them, mm -hmm. so you need to know how much weight is on the front axle, rear axle. Um, and then you start the process. So then we drop the dirty, smelly stuff out. So the engine, gearbox, fuel tank, exhausts, everything to do with that all gets dropped out. Mm -hmm. You then corner weight it again, because then you want to figure out, well, where, where can we let now add the weight on? Mm -hmm. um, and then you start the process of converting. And usually the first question we ask a customer is, do you want to go mild or wild? <laughs> so wild would be Tesla power, like that BMW, yeah. which is what we're doing with the Tesla Rosses. See what I did there? Mm -hmm. Tesla Rosses, not Tesla Rosses. So we're going to go Tesla power with these. 
Um, and then it's a question of how much range the customer is expecting, what sort of charging speed. So yeah. we, we agree the scope um, uh, up front, and then we get our teeth into it. So then once the engine and everything's out, it would be in a similar state to probably that Fiat 500. Mm -hmm. So this now we're just prepping the engine bay because this engine bay was in a little bit of a poor state. Mm -hmm. uh, so Al's just like prepping that for a bit of paint. Um, but that's the engine is out, the fuel tank's out, and you can actually see over here, there's the new 21st century engine to go in it. Oh, wow. So this is the motor. That's the adapter plate that we've built up. And this will literally just bolt on mm -hmm. to the original gearbox. Beautiful. So uh, that's the motor. And then uh, in there then goes the battery backs and everything else. So what we're going to try and figure out when the dirty smelly stuff gets ripped out is what can fit and where. Yeah. Um, so in this Porsche 914, actually, if you have a look at the fabrication shop, you'll see. So we'll measure everything out mm -hmm. and figure out how many batteries can fit and where, both from a weight perspective, but also a space perspective. Yeah. So obviously, you, you, can, you can't have a 500 mile range Mini uh, and fill the whole back seat up with batteries because then the chassis would just collapse. Yeah. So there's a weight constraint and a space constraint. So the fabrication shop here um, will do things like this. this. This is a battery box here. Yeah. The guys have figured out, uh, this is a Porsche 9, 914. So this is a Porsche 914 battery box. Mm -hmm. We figured out where we can, what shape we can make it, how many yeah. batteries we can fit in. And the guys will then start making all that up. And I think this is just a mock-up. Because uh, once we've done a kit, we then do repeatables. So once we've got, we've got the mock-up and the design, we'll then make another one just and put it on the shelf as a reference. Mm. So the next one that Sensible. comes in, obviously yeah. wants a kit, we can essentially build it up. Mm. And that's what all these are on the shelf behind you here now. Oh, wow. These are all mock-ups of like different types of kits. There's Fiat 500 right-hand drive box, Fiat 500 left-hand drive, um, Mini, uh, 911. Yes, yeah, so that's the one that um, slots under the rear seat. That's right. Yeah, yeah I thought so that, that was very neat. Rear seat. Good job uh, is it going to put all those storage points in. Really. It's, it's got loads of space in the Mini. I don't know, yeah. why people are, I don't know why you needed to make the Mini bigger. Mm. So once we've done the fabrication, if you come over here at uh, 914, We'll then start putting it in the vehicle. So in here now, you'll see we've got the, the final version of that same box that was on the uh, oh, yeah. bench. So this is the proper version of it now. Mm -hmm. uh, and on here now, we've actually put it in and we've started to do right, figure out where the cable's going to go. There's a charger already mounted to it here. Um, and the cradle for the motor's in. Uh, front box, I don't think, in. No, front box isn't in. So if, I, if you watch yourself, I'm just going to lift this up. OK. Now, these cars are rare in themselves, the Porsche 914. A, a joint development with Volkswagen, a mid engine sort of funky little sports car, but I'm not sure Volkswagen's hearts were really in it. And uh, it, it's a slightly curious car, sold quite well in America, but uh, frankly, I don't think enough of them had six cylinder engines. I think that was the problem. Ian, if you come over here, you'll see how rare this car is. So. It's got the steering wheel on the wrong oh, side. Oh, yes, right-hand drive. So all Porsche 914s are made left-hand drive. OK. So if you see a right-hand drive uh, 914, it's mm -hmm. been converted to right-hand drive. Uh -huh. uh, there's a company called Crayford that used to do these conversions back in the day. Oh, yeah, it did lots of convertibles lots of as well. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, it's very rare to see a right-hand drive one. Yeah. So in here now, this is the motor that's going to go in there. Mm -hmm. So that uh, will sit on that mount there mm -hmm. and there's another mount uh, a front and back and that one obviously goes there and that one goes there so the fabrication guys now have figured out um how the mounting works so this is actually mounting directly onto the gearbox and, and engine mounts uh -huh. uh, as, as the uh, engine and gearbox did yeah yeah uh, and essentially you'll have the motor here battery box in there and it's all empty at the moment but no mm -hmm. batteries obviously and the guys as i said before they're, they're trying to figure out where the cable routings are going to go at the moment so this is kind of mid process at the moment so yeah. the fabrication work is done and the the electrical guys are getting their teeth into it at the moment beautiful so. so where do all these tesla parts come from um well we use 50 percent tesla 50 percent new motors and batteries mm -hmm. um but they come from uh, crash teslas right so people that have been sideswiped by a lorry on the motorway or whatever it doesn't take much to insurance right off a car nowadays no, no very true so uh, we've got um various different suppliers throughout europe 
that phone us up as soon as they get a Tesla in. Mm -hmm. And invariably, we normally take it. So you use, uh, this is a, a motor, this is a rear, rear small motor. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the thing though, that, that, that little bit there is a motor. Gosh. And then, so you've got, that's the motor, that's yeah. the gear reduction unit, and they're the inverters on the end. And that little bit there, that's 300 horsepower. Yeah, so, you need a much bigger um, c conventional engine to make that sort of yeah. power. So, yeah. uh, you know, 300 horsepower in that little bit there, mm. it's all sealed, no maintenance, yeah. you know, 100% reliability. That's and do, do, you, do you have a typical figure for what an electric conversion does to the overall weight of a car? Uh, Obviously, it's going to vary depending control. on what people... Well, our, our aim is always to try to um, keep the weight of the car about the same as when it drove in with a full, full tank of petrol, wow. which is why we corner weight the cars mm -hmm. um, when they come in, corner weight it again when it's empty, mm -hmm. while the engine gearbox is out, and then that, from that we can figure out how many batteries you can put on the front axle, the rear axle, what sort of motor we can put in to make sure it doesn't go too heavy. Mm -hmm. But equally, you don't want to put all the weight in the rear no. or the front. Yeah. So it, they normally end up being about weight neutral or maybe yeah. a little bit heavier, maybe with uh, like the weight of one passenger in sort of thing. Mm. But uh, that's it. Yeah, we're way, way past the old lead acid days when oh, batteries yeah. just weighed an absolute ton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a lead acid battery over there out of that camper there. I can't even lift it. Seriously, it's a two man lift. Gosh. It's a lesser battery. And it's only 100 amp hour or something ridiculous. Mm. You know, that, that's, if it's lithium, you can pick it up like that. Mm. So. And something else I'm fascinated by is the way you can program everything. So you can say how strong you want the power to come in. Yep. Uh, can you do traction control as well? Yep, traction control uh, on the Teslas. Um, uh, it's a, a standard cruise control as well if you wanted it. Um, you have re different regen settings, mm -hmm. so you could have different modes. So on the Land Rovers, we've got like on-road mode, off-road mode. Um, in you know more sporty cars, you'll have like track mode or sport mode, mm. uh, eco mode. Um, so yeah, you, you can play around with the power delivery and the regenerative braking um, uh, effect. Um, so they're completely programmable. Yeah, well, so still, I mean, modern cars you can sort of tune with computers, but you can do plenty of that with the electric as well. Yep, exactly. Fascinating. Yeah. This has got a, um, a Tesla motor very similar to that in, in right in the rear because this car yeah well, this would have had the gearbox at the back exactly, wouldn't it it was yeah. an oddball uh, not oddball i mean it was just um strange compared to most yeah the engine up front one of the largest um uh, uh cylinder capacity uh four cylinders three mm -hmm. liter but four, four cylinders so the pistons were like you know that big yeah so the engine was up front torque tube then to the gearbox in the back and when we looked at it the gearbox space was about the same as that so I thought, right, we'll put that in the rear. Yeah. The um, uh, motor um, up front, uh, or engine up front now is just all battery pack. And then uh, we've got a, um, a battery pack underneath um, where the fuel tank used to be. Mm -hmm. So now, interior-wise, it's exactly the same um, space as it was when it was um, petrol. Wow. But now it goes like... Yeah, I mean, uh, as it happens, I drove a, a, a turbocharged one of these not all that long ago, and the power delivery was amazing, but the noise isn't really, all, it's a four cylinder engine, so it's not, it's not a noise you're gonna miss. So I think that, um, yeah, that, the idea of an electric converted one of these That's is so very smooth. interesting. It mm. just glides along. Yeah. I love this car. I mean, I, I, I've always hankered after a Porsche 944, but never really got to drive one. Mm -hmm. And the first one I ever got to drive is an electric one. And now I've driven it. I kept the 50-50 weight balance, which mm -hmm. is important. So the handling is still perfect. But the smooth delivery, the power, mm. is just effortless power. Wow. And it's addictive as well. Yeah, I, yeah, I, 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 I find that. I have driven some quick electric cars and you, you, you just think, and the other thing I find, it's the regen. As soon as I drive a normal car, just like every time you hit the brake pedal, this is just creating waste heat. So yeah, I, 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 I do like the technology. Well, I mean, all engines create waste heat because, I mean, only 16% of the energy, well, depends on what sort of engine. I'm talking about classic cars, but more mm. modern cars are probably more like 30%. But, you know, only a small percentage of the energy that you're throwing at the engine is turned into motion. Mm. The rest is turned into noise and heat and, like, you know, vibration. Well, I suppose that does bring me to another question. What do you do about heating? Because these cars are no longer producing all that waste heat. Uh, there is a very good answer to that somewhere. Where is it? So usually in a car, you've got essentially that sitting in something 
like that, obviously. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. not the right one for this, but imagine... It, it works that. for the example, yeah. Um, so that's your coolant coming from your engine, mm -hmm. going through a radiator, and what happens is you've got a, a fan blowing the air through that to heat up the cabin. Mm -hmm. But obviously, when you go electric, that's gone. Yeah. So as you rightly point out, what do you do then? Well, essentially, what you do is you fit that in. So this would be the cartridge where the old uh, radiator would mm -hmm. uh, go. You take that out and you put essentially an electric version in. So in there is like an element out of a, uh, uh, like like a hairdryer or a, or a um, hand dryer in a toilet. Mm -hmm. Essentially, you, what you've got is an electric element and a fan. So now when you turn it on, bang, instant heat. Yeah, you haven't got to wait for it to warm up. Yeah, so yeah. by the time you get to work normally in the car, it's like it's just about to start to get warm. Now, as you put it on, bang, instant. So that's what you do. You essentially replace the, the water-based um, element with an mm -hmm. electric-based element. So we're jumping into the world of personal projects here. <laughs> what on earth is this and what is it going to be? You should know by now, he who dies with the most toys wins, Ian. Oh, OK. And I've got to have my toys. I've, I've run out of projects because uh, my Beetle, my bus and my Land Rover, they're all kind of finished. Um, everybody else has to do it for you. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> So I get itchy fingers and I gotta like get my get my head and my hands into projects, and as Tony rightly points out now, I've got other people to help me. Mm -hmm. So uh, whenever I want to do stupid projects, I get other people to uh, help me make it happen, and this is what this is. Okay. So can you guess what it is? Um, not entirely. I'm picking up some sort of buggy vibes. Well, it's actually uh, it's a Fun Cup chassis. Okay. So Fun Cup is a, a VW Beetle silhouette mm -hmm. race car championship. It's an endurance race championship. Okay. So this is actually, normally has a fiberglass VW Beetle body over it, mm -hmm. single seater. So you've got one seat in the middle. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think it has an Audi um, engine in the back. And I thought, right, well, I want to get back into racing because I've, I've missed doing the rally and then the racing. Yeah, yeah. I've done it now for, what is it, six years? It's ridiculous. So I need to get back and do Sydney stuff again. Mm -hmm. So I'll build a race uh, car. Um, and I thought, obviously, if I'm going to do that, it's going to have to be electric. And obviously, if we're going to uh, build a race car, it's going to have to be stupidly powerful, because mm -hmm. it's me. Um, so we're putting a Tesla drive unit front, uh, front and rear, because mm -hmm. this didn't have an engine in, normally in the uh, front, so we've had to figure that out. So we've got a large Tesla drive unit in the rear. So essentially, it's going to be like a, P, a Tesla P100D. Mm -hmm. And they do 0 to 60 in 2.6 seconds. But that thing there. Quite a bit lighter, I should imagine. Yeah, those things are over two ton. Oof. This, this we're aiming at around about. What's the weight going to be on this, Stratton Tone? Uh, about a ton. So Blimey. less than half the weight, but the same amount of power. Yeah. Um, and what I want to do is normally the uh, the motor is actually flipped around the other way. Mm -hmm. So this is normally hanging over the arse end, if you like. Yeah. But on this, I want to kind of flip it this way to keep all the weight within the axles yeah. to make it really handle. That means now I need to run this motor backwards, which normally isn't a problem, but this is the master to the front slave motor. Right. So whatever the front, uh, whatever this motor's doing, it tells the front motor to do. But I want to have the front motor facing the right way. So it, if I don't figure out the logic, this is going to be telling it to go in reverse and the two axles are going to want to do this or do this. <laughs> Constantine itself up. Yeah, so yeah. you've got to try and it's some head scratching, which is what yeah. I love in projects. That's yeah. what projects are all about. Doing stuff that either hasn't been done before or um, figuring out you know, solutions to problems that are just hard. Mm. So uh, that's yeah. what we're doing at the moment. We're doing, building a race car um, uh, project, which uh, is going to keep me busy for a while. Yeah, wow. Keep me off the streets and out of yeah. the pubs. Yeah, and that's going to be quite lively, I should suspect. Yeah, yeah. going to come back and have a go in that one. Oh, yeah, that'll be fun. I'll scare myself witless. <laughs> Well, you can't have a go in this one today, but uh, probably you have a go in another car if you want. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll do that, and that, that will be out in a separate video. I'm looking forward to this, because I do love electric. So, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll head off and do that next. But thank you very much for showing us around. That's right, and, anytime, uh, Ian. Good to see you again. Don't forget, they've got their own YouTube channel, Electric Classic Cars, and uh, you can see Vintage Voltage on Quest. Quest TV on um, yeah, Thursdays at 9 p.m. And there are online options as well, which is how we managed to catch up with it because we never find time for watching telly so yeah do go and check them out and thank you very much no worries in good to see you again